you will not believe the amount of money that Global Cycling Network makes. What's up guys, my name is Charles and welcome back to my cycling YouTube channel. In today's video, it's not a product review, it's not an adventure, it's not a challenge that I give myself on the bike, but I will be digging through cycling's kings of YouTube and its kingdom, the Global Cycling Network and all its sisters channel. I will estimate to the best of my knowledge GCN all revenue streams. Let's get into it. If you click on this video, you must already know what GCN is. As soon as you type something on YouTube, they are usually the first video to show up. But here's what you maybe did not know about them. GCN is operated by PlaySport Network, which is owned by Discovery Communication, which is an American multinational mass media company. They own Eurosport, which you might listen to Bike Race on, but also channels like the Discovery Channel, the Food Network, TLC, the Oprah Winfrey Show, yes, Yes, they own the Oprah Winfrey Show and they own GCN, <laughs> Science Channel and way, way more. But let's get back to what interests all of us and find out how much money does GCN and all its sisters channel actually make. This one is easy to estimate. We need the daily views and the CPM, which is the cost per 1000 impression. For the daily views, I'm using a website called Social Blade and the main GCN channel makes 500,000 views per day. Adding up all the daily views of the 10 sister channel, this is a total of 1.35 million views per day. Now for the CPM. This is a value that can vary a lot depending on the audience. Where they're located, what are their interests, do they have money, but hey, it's cycling and sadly it's a rich man's sport and advertisers are paying top dollars to have their ads in front of your eyes. Since I also run a cycling channel, I can estimate that GCN CPM is somewhat close to mine, which is around $7.50 per 1000 views. Simple math here, it's 1.35 million divided by 1,000 multiplied by $7, which gave us a total of $9,450 per day and 3.4 million per year. This one is impossible for me to know exactly, but paid partnership can generate a lot of money. When you scroll through any GCN channel, you see this little ad on the thumbnail from time to time. And in my opinion, ads with such a big viewership can generate between 15 and $25,000 per video. In the last month, GCN main channel had nine, oh, nine <laughs> sponsored video the GMBN add two and the GTN add three. So this is a total of 14 video with an average of $15,000 per video for a total of $280,000 per month, 3.3 million a year. Okay, this product is mainly for the hardcore race enthusiasts. I will go with a percentage of GCN Racing subscriber count. They currently have 165,000 subscribers and let's say that's only 3% of that subscriber base that do subscribe to this paid race pass that retails for $13 per month. This is an estimate of 5,000 people which generates $65,000 per month, 780,000 a year. This one, once again, it's all speculation. It's really hard for me to tell because no one have access to this data except for GCN employees. But I will use this average YouTuber's pie chart of all the revenue stream. 34% of the revenue comes from ads. 33% of the revenue comes from paid partnership, which I was really damn close with 3.4 million of ads and 3.3 million of paid partnership. And we will assume that the GCN Racing Pass is like a Patreon subscription at around 7% of the revenue. This leaves us with 26% of GCN total revenue that comes from the merch for a grand total of 2.57 million a year. Adding up all the revenue stream to this date on October 13, 2020, I estimate that GCN and all its sister channel generates a total of $10,050,000 a year. Man, this was really interesting to make, but please take those results with a grain of salt. If you have any input, uh, leave a comment down below. If you think GCN makes more money, less money, anything, just let me know and I reply to every single comment. All right, enough talking. I'm going outside for a training and you guys are coming with me. I will be doing 10 laps of this really short circuit, which is a super steep wall of about like 12 to 15%. It's about like 25 seconds long and I will be doing 10 laps of it Take a break, 10 laps of it, take a break until I cannot push this climb no more. All right, let's go. This is harder than I thought. Woo, first 
set is done. It was a bit harder than I thought, especially in the last two climbs, but there was those kids on the side of the road who keep cheering me. It was really fun to see. I felt a little bit like a Tour de France, sort of. It actually does make the difference. So there's this one thing you have to be really careful is when I'm coming down here to that right hairpin, there's, uh, it's wet on the ground. So coming to that really tight corner, I need to slow down a lot. I cannot have any speed because it's banked. That would mean I would crash for sure if I try to get any speed from that. All right, so it's been more than five minutes of break. It's now time to put the GoPro away and get back on the bike for another round of 10 climbs. Let's go. hills like that is you just suffer and you suffer and then you do it again and you suffer and you suffer but in the end it's always gonna pay off because it's always on those little claims that you can drop your friends always all right set number two is completed this one was a little bit harder than the first one no it was not harder i went less harder I was a little bit more focused on filming with my on bike camera and in my inwards hoods like Rimco Evinopole video a lot of you guys ask me how did I get those shots of uh, filming on my bike so let me show you. So I'm using here is a, a film camera clamp with a friction arm so this arm uh, holds up my camera all the way here. So this is my small Insta360 GO so all I have to do is just press the button and it records 180 degree. Um, so it's really nice, it, it gets those vertical shots and those horizontal shots at the same time. And what's cool about a clamp like this is I can simply untight it and rearrange it to however I want. So here I have the camera facing me like that with this distance, uh, or I can point it away, I can be up, it can be down here as you maybe saw in this video, I have this one shot with the camera here. So it's super flexible and if I want it to be uh, just like toe away, I can just tied it up like this and now it's not too annoying so after two sets I am at 326 normalized which is a really good number I'll try to bring this up at the last effort Look who just joined me when I'm just done. What up, Tristan? What up? <laughs> Always late. <laughs> Always late. Tristan is late to the party. I've done the 30 climbs and now uh, I guess we're just gonna do a few more and chill. A few more and chills. A few more and chills. All right, so now I am at 336 normalized. So it's a good, uh, it's a good workout. Now me and Tristan are just gonna go chill. We go do a pro tour, Tristan. Pro tours, pro tours. Pro tour, pro tours. Yo, nice bike, man. Thank you, thank you. This is it for today's video. If you enjoyed, please leave a thumbs up. It's always really appreciated. And Tristan, what they should do next? Find me on the road or in the next video. <laughs> no, you, you need to tell them to subscribe first. And then you can find me on the road or I'll see you into the... No, I'll see you on the road or into the next video. Comment, like, subscribe. <laughs> I'll see you on the road or in the next video. <laughs> All right, peace, guys.